Hi, I'm George Dory, and welcome to our Coast to Coast AM YouTube channel. Have fun, tell your friends, and share us with everyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Coast to Coast AM's mobile app. And always remember to log on to our website at coasttocoastam.com for daily articles, the best paranormal information, and all you need to know about your favorite guests. And now you can become a Coast Insider directly through the Coast mobile app. We welcome our international listeners and even offer a free two-week trial. So don't delay. Become an insider today. Hello there, Connie Willis, your host. Well, one of my creepy hotspots, we went and met up with my next guest and his hayfield and stayed there for, I think it was three nights, four days. And apparently we were like the people that, you know, stayed longer than anybody ever. But Lee Hample is our guest. He's been on here before. And what happened is he purchased some land and found out that there were many unexplained entities that are living there. And, you know, being there myself, it's just like a plot of land. It's just nice flat land, barn, farmland, flat and very just normal looking. But he has so many pictures and so many stories to tell. And we picked up a few as well, being there myself. He's been on all sorts of television shows. He's a hit and everybody loves Lee. If you've met him, he's just a really great guy. Married with two kids. This is in Illinois. He grew up on a dairy farm in northeastern Illinois, graduate from Northern Illinois University, mathematics and chemistry major. He taught high school. He's now retired from that. He has ventured to figure out things, uh, learn how to be able to do that, uh, learn to get footprints in a way that he literally gets footprints. We had so much fun doing our uh, creepy hotspot there with you. And I, I got to ask you, did we break? I, I know you said no one's ever even stayed a full night at the time. And we stayed three full nights. Um, so has anybody beat my record? Should I have to come back and beat theirs? Uh, you, you've surpassed everybody. Uh, nobody has made it out there for the whole night. I had two gentlemen. They wanted to stay overnight. So they wanted to stay out there. One said, yeah, I'm a Marine, and the other guy said, yeah, I've been in the Army and seen everything. And I said, okay, well, nobody's made it overnight except the Blue Rockers, but they were in an <laughs> RV to mention this. But uh, actually, I have stayed out there overnight in an RV also, So, but not three nights. But they had two vehicles out there. They each drove out in my field. And they were parked out there. By 11.30, I was in my shed that up next to the road and one truck just came through and left and I go well maybe they went to get a sandwich or something or something to drink and the Elkhorn and then the other one stopped and I said so what's happening he goes well he said gentleman from Springfield got a really bad headache and he had to leave there was another gentleman with him and I said is he driving he said no the other one is driving they're going back to Springfield he got a real bad headache. I said, well, do you have a headache? He goes, well, no, no. I said, so why are you leaving? He said, I'm not staying out there alone, but he's a Marine. They're like That's the toughest true. of all, man. He said, I've been in Iraq. I've been places, but I know wow. what's around me. Out there, <laughs> there's things out there. I don't know what's happening out there. He said, the hair was standing <laughs> up on my neck. and he's You know, you've heard the stories of the Beast of Bray Road, and you've heard the Dog Man in the Hayfield of Lee's. But if you go there, if he allows you to go there, you know, it's, it, it's specific. It's like even the creepy hotspots I go to or people allow me to go to. You got to kind of handpick your people along the way. You don't want to mess things up. But our group, we were lucky enough to get to see the pictures that if you're there, only then will he decide if he's going to show them to you, some special pictures. I have never seen pictures like you have gotten from your specific area not and, and not just on your land but you you know you have those cameras pointed and get the surrounding area too i have never seen such great pictures and great detail and of things that it's like oh my but some of them actually gave us answers to some of the questions we had and that's just amazing what you got lee and i know it's taken years for you to get those but still they're Sometimes you can't get any pictures because these things don't allow it, it seems like. Property was purchased in 2007, and I did not farm there until 2011. I was farming at my mother's property in 2010. She passed on, and at that time, then I had to farm in Elkhorn. 
and I began farming there in 2011. I did not know anything of the Beast of Bray Road. I had not ever heard of it. I was not interested in anything like that. <laughs> and <laughs> till 2013, two neighbors helping me bale hay. And afterwards, we stand at the end of my barn, the west end of my barn, looking out the field. And the one farmer said, you know, the werewolf lives back on your property. What are you talking about? You're so full of it. Your eyes are brown. But I thought, well, he hadn't been drinking beer. He's been loading hay, but I, he was having a beer then. But <laughs> he started telling about all these farmers that had seen the Beast of Bray Road. They called it then. And he said, we used to call it a werewolf, and now we call it the Beast of Bray Road. And he started telling about all these farmers in the area that had seen it or had a occurrence with it. And so at that point, I put out a, a raccoon that I found on the road, and it was in real tall grass, and it was cut open, and the innards were out. And two days later, when I checked it, that's how it was. It was down in the three-foot-tall grass, and I go, what did this, you know? And so 20, 30 cameras later and 10 years later, I've had out one to five cameras in the last 10 years to capture, you know, many, many photos and many, many paranormal anomalies. I mean, it was interesting, too, because you would show a picture and then you'd say, what do you see? And then you would zoom in and go, this is where I zoomed in here. Now, look, I zoomed in even more here <laughs> to be able to zoom in how you did and then to see those things. I, first of all, compliment you and thank you for zooming in because you wouldn't have seen those things otherwise. And you were particular enough to look and go, hey, let me zoom in here. I guess I can say anything, right? And you can just dodge it or not because <laughs> <Sure. laughs> I know I can't show the pictures, but the spaceships and, and the things in the pods and and just unreal pictures that I just can't get over still. But now the last two years, uh, because of the number of individuals that have seen the shows, the Travel Channel and Discovery Channel with Josh Gason's thing, I allow up to 20 people, and they pay me a fee, and I show them an hour and a half of pictures, mm. and then we go for a half-hour hayride around the property. Lee Hample is with us tonight and talking about his hayfield. Now, Lee, you were, um, uh, so those of you that are into the cryptids, into dog man, werewolf, whatever you might like to call it, but then beyond, it's not just so you all know, it's not just the dog man or werewolf or the beast. It's, it's way more things happening than that. And I find that in any of these places that you go that have activity, it's not just one. Now, uh, Lee, you may or may not agree with me. I think they all know each other. I don't think they're, I don't know that they're all friends, but I know they all know each other. I have five different types of tracks. So I know there's at least five different types of tracks and different animals or different creatures. I'll see two tracks at the same time, uh, like in snow, of the five-toed, seven-pad track type. And so I know there's several of those that have the same type of track, too. So, yes. Now, you were talking about you were taking people on the hayride and giving presentations. I mean, that's so natural for you as a teacher. Yes, it works out very well. I have a blast doing it. And it led to May 20th, 2023. Now will be the third time that I've seen the Beast of Bray Road. So that was last spring. And I had 8 o'clock viewing. We watched pictures and question and answers for an hour and a half. And so 10 o'clock, we went out in the field on the hayride. And there were some very interesting adventures out there with the GPS on some of the iPhones and people's phones not working properly or the GPS telling them that their car was moving. And the one lady told my brother that her car was moving and that her <laughs> iPhone said that it was 500 feet from where it was at. So there's a lot of electronic interference. And my brother told her, well, it's probably okay. And, then, and when we got back there, of course, her car was in the same spot. So her iPhone GPS system had been altered and disturbed. So that happens mm. frequently, frequently. But that particular night at 10 o'clock, everybody had left, and I had the small door on the east end open, person door, the human door. And, of course, the lights were on inside. I took my truck and went out to the road, which I would say is probably 300 feet from the front of my yeah. barn. And I had put up some signs for people to find to with my address on it and conferences being held here, you know. And so I picked up those signs and I threw them in my pickup truck. 
then got my pickup truck and started to drive up to the barn to put them inside. Well, as I start to drive, and I have this human door that is backlit with the lights inside of my barn. Suddenly, that doorway is 80 to 90% covered with a silhouette. I can see the head. I can see the shoulders. 84 inches tall, 7 feet tall. And the head was touching the shadow or, or the silhouette. I wouldn't, it wouldn't be a shadow because I'm looking at the silhouette of this creature. His head was up even at the top of the door. He basically covered, say, 80 to 90% of the doorway for four to five seconds. And I stopped the truck and just looked. You could see some movement, and then it was gone. So I threw my brights on, accelerated, drove around the side of the shed looking, and the, nothing was there. So that's the third time that I know I have certainly have seen the creature. What were the other that two? Was, the other two... May 5th, it's interesting you're all in May, May 5th, 2017, Mm. at 10.30 at night, I was going to go into Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, and I pulled out of my driveway to turn south on Bowers Road. And as soon as I turned south, two telephone poles down, which would be, I think, probably another 250 feet or so, on the side of the road were two red glowing eyes looking at me about three feet off of the road you know up in the air and i knew immediately i said this is not a coyote or a deer i've seen them at night many times and they have yellow to yellowish green eyes they don't have red eyes so i threw my bright time again accelerating because i know i'm looking at that's not a deer or coyote then it went down the embankment very quickly and that embankment is four and a half feet tall and may 5th The grass was a foot high on top of the embankment next to the road. And he's looking over the top at me with these glowing red eyes. And I go, wow. So I try to angle my lights towards it. But immediately it was 15, 20 feet out in the field. It turned. I saw one red eye, one glowing red eye. But it's not glowing. I mean, it is glowing, but it's not reflecting. Because immediately it was another 15, 20 feet. So that's 30, 40 feet out in my field. The red eye was just as bright out there as it was up by the road. How does it have a energy source that can create red eyes like that? And I could not see any body I'm talking to myself because I'm accelerating. I'm trying to turn my lights out and jumped out in the field. And I never saw any body, at least six to six and a half feet tall, looking over the top of the grass. It was like it flew. Did it really jump or did it fly? I couldn't really tell because, I mean, it was just so fast. And all of a sudden, it's 15, 20 feet. I see one red eye out in the field and then another 15, 20 feet approximately. And I see one red eye again and then it disappeared. But it was just so fast. And you thought it had a, it should have a body because you got the impression I, it should be a body? Or did you, I mean, did you yeah. ever think it was a, an orb? No, I've seen many orbs with night scopes and things of that type. But this was two eyes that were maintained the same distance apart. Well, the next day, my son came up, and that night I got real ill, too. That's an interesting story, too. Yeah. And I lost about 90 minutes of time also. Go ahead. That's fine. Holy cow, you had 90 minutes of missing time, and you didn't feel Uh, good. I went down the road and turned around at the next farm down the road to come back, swung and put my lights out in the field, and there was nothing there. And I'm thinking, okay, I have to tell someone. I left my barn at 10.30. It's got to be like 11.45 or 10.45 or so. I mean, I just drove down the road. I said, okay, I called my brother Fred. You know, I know it's late at night. He's been in bed, but I got to tell somebody because I want to have a close to the situation and the occurrence as possible to relate it to someone else. So I pulled to the west end of my barn. I get better reception there, and, and I called my brother Fred and told him the story very logically, you know. I just saw this thing. It did, I, I wasn't uh, emotional at all. <laughs> but <laughs> so I told him the story. And so I went in my room there. I have a bedroom that I built inside of my barn. And I went in there to try to go to sleep. I couldn't go to sleep. But I became very ill, you know, later that night. And Fred tried to call me in the morning. And, but I was throwing up and running to the 
outdoor bathroom there. And I, I didn't answer. I did not hear it ring, in fact. So he called my wife and my son in Wakanda. Again, I live 35 miles from my farm. I do not live at my farm. I live 35 miles away. And he called him and he said that, you know, Lee had seen the beast the night before, and he's not answering the phone. I will go up and see if he's if he's there. You know, is Lee still there? You know, where's Lee? Where's Lee? My son said he'd come up. So he told my brother Fred that my son, my son lives here with us in Wakanda. So he came up. He said, you okay? You okay? And I go, well, not really. But I said, uh, let's go down. I know right where I saw it. Let's look for tracks. And so we went there immediately, and there was the five-toed, seven-pad tracks just in the field. The only tracks there, those five-toed, seven-pad tracks, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of times, and many people have seen them. And there's no animal in the world that has a five-toed, seven-pad, and it's canid because you can see the toes, the toenails. So the tracks were there right at the edge of the field. We could not find where it landed. If it did land out in the field, there was just too much debris. But those tracks were right next to the field. So when was the missing time? That was in May, December. My niece, Fred's daughter, had a New Year's Day brunch. And oh, it wasn't the so, same night that the other happened? I thought it yes, was the it same was. night. Yes, oh. it was. But I didn't know it until December. I was talking with Fred and Sharon, his wife. You know, we were talking about some other people were asking some questions, and I was talking about it. And I apologized to Fred for calling, you know, so late. I said it had to be like 11 o'clock. He goes, 11 o'clock? It was after midnight. It was like 1220. Couldn't have been. There was no way. How was it that? He's, That's when you called and confirmed by my sister-in-law. I have no recollection of where I could have been because my thought, I drove down the road, turned around, looked out in the field, came into my driveway, went to the end of my shed and called him. I have no idea where I could have been from, let's say, 11 o'clock till 12 after midnight. I, I, I don't know where I could have possibly have been. It's great that, you know, he called so he so that he could bring this up at one point so you can even recognize that you had the missing time. Otherwise, you wouldn't even know that. I would not have known that. And so I contacted my phone server and I said, can I get my phone records from May? No. I go, what do you mean, no? And they go back two years. He goes, yeah, that's TV. We, no, we keep them 30 days. So I wanted to get my phone record to see the actual time I did call, but I wasn't able to do that. So I just have the verification from him. That's really scary. That's exactly right. And that's where it's really hard to describe to people that when there is missing time, it, it's like you try to write down everything that ever happens or try to remember in some way, well, you're not going to remember, but try to write them things down. Or when people call, try to, you know, just include these types of things. These are the clues along the way that'll let you know if you were there or not. Because again, you don't feel it, right? Even though no. you have that missing time, you didn't feel anything. You didn't hear noises. You didn't hear a click. You didn't feel somebody grab your jacket and pull you away. There's no feeling at no. all. Now, this is three times I've had missing time out there. The other ones are longer stories. But the scary part is that now reality that I think is reality isn't. No, have absolute convinced that I did. There was something else that happened in there, approximately 90 minutes. Where was I? Yeah. There's just so many questions at your place, and it just yeah. looks like this nice little hayfield. That's all. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. People, people, uh, they, 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 uh, there, there's been groups there that, have, you know, my, my brother Fred has told them, and I've told them that things change out here at night, and they don't believe it until they're out there. So, <laughs> well, you know, a lot of your pictures are in the day. Oh, yeah. Yes, I have a lot of daytime pictures, sure. Yes, I mean, shafts and yeah. orbs and you can know, I, the, the figures and UFOs. Mm -hmm. Can I mention the pods? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, you want to describe the pods? I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> There's these pods, you guys, <laughs> coming from down the sky. <laughs> this is where when the figure shows up on the side. Is that the one you're yes. talking about? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That's from 2000, uh, I think 2015. And my camera is five feet off the ground and facing out in my hayfield. And suddenly uh, there's a, 
black figure that is the shoulder is even with the camera. And you can see the head and you can see the shoulder and the shoulders is in the center of the camera. So that shoulder is five feet off the ground. And I had the camera set so it took three pictures in a second, a burst of three. And you can see the movement of this figure, which is up close to the camera. But the, that's very interesting because yes. this is out in my hayfield, my private hayfield. <clears throat> and to get there, you have to come through my hayfield or you got to come through very heavy undergrowth woods that have a tremendous amount of uh, blackberry bushes in them and then through a cornfield and uh, to get to my property. So this is not somebody, there's nobody pranking me for the last 10 years in these, in these pictures that I have. So that that's an interesting part that this black figure is there and it's like to say the shoulder is five feet off the ground. But in the background, <clears throat> seven minutes before the the blue sky is it's just a blue sky. Now when the figure comes, these how could we describe them? Uh, they're they're pods, round pods, white pods but they have a black figure in the middle of the pod and they're next to the figure or a little bit behind the figure, behind this big figure. And they move in the, in the blink of an eye, they'll be there or they'll, there was five of them and then it went to two. Then it went back to, I think five or six of these pods with the figure in them by the, you know, only when the only when the large figure was by the camera, and they they move and they're flying around and and that takes a, a three pictures in a second. So a blink of an eye is a twenty five hundredths of a second. So those pods are moving and and appearing or disappearing with a blink of an eye. It it's just so amazing. What I had picked up from that picture was it seemed like uh, it went to the camera. And did, you know, we do shots called point of view, and it looked like it was the point of view of the, it, to me, it looked like a Bigfoot, so, the side of a Bigfoot. That's what it looked like to me. This is just, this is what I picked up from it. And the, and it looked like, okay. yeah, yeah, the figure to me looked Bigfootish. Maybe it wasn't, maybe it was something else, but it seemed Bigfootish to me. Um, and it seemed like it went up to the camera and it was kind of going like, here you go, Lee, take a look at this. And I want to make sure you see me because I'm here and we're friends. And here, take a look at this. We know your camera's here. And as it, you know, looking and it's looking at the pods and the pods, it just, it just gave me, it seemed to me, it gave some answers. It looked like to me, tell me if I'm wrong from what I'm, what I'm talking about here, but it seemed like. I don't know, but it seemed like the pods were coming to, and it looked like a bubble with something in it. You know, like the pod itself, it looked like there's this bubble with some entity in it. One, and, and most of them were like standing in a way, like arms down to the side and everything and, and feet together, legs together. But one of them had its arms out, right? And yeah. it just seemed like it was coming down from the sky or something. It seemed like this round thing that was around them, protecting them either from wherever they came from or what they're doing or whatever. Um, that that's what I remember from it. I just thought, oh my gosh, they're in their own individual bubble, and maybe that's their own environment. I, I I don't I don't know. I have no answers, but I've never seen anything like it. Well, I know there's speculation that you know UFOs are associated with the cryptids, mm -hmm. um, and I think this those pictures are absolute absolute proof of that because those pods are. Our UFOs, they're flying, they're moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they're not anything that I know. There's no, nothing that we have that flies like that. No. And here, here is a cryptid in the picture, uh, you know, uh, up next to the camera. Be a, a Bigfoot or, or one of the types of dog man. I have, I have some pictures of, uh, I mean, they don't even look like Dogman or, or Bigfoot. They're long-legged things. They look like the, the 
Uh, like a brain mantis? a long-legged thing. Or something know. else, okay. Yeah, so there are other ones out there. But yeah. I think this, this shows that there is a relationship between the cryptids and the UFOs. I have pictures right there. That's absolute proof of it in my mind. Yeah, and I've seen it myself. They're all together. And that's where I'm like, okay, they know each other. I don't know how good of a friend they are, but they know each other. And they may work with each other. Well, I mean, you know, I'll be tracking. I mean, I have uh, seen the tracks hundreds of times in snow and, 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 and dirt. And I'll be tracking it across my field. And I know it's not the coyote. It's not a deer. They have distinct tracks. And uh, suddenly those tracks will just stop. Yeah. So, uh, or other times I'll be walking in, in snow or snowmobiling and the tracks, I'll look in here where the tracks will just start. They'll just be, uh, you know, two, they, they usually land side by side and then they'll walk away. The Coast Mobile app is now available for download on iPhones and Android devices. You can become an insider directly through this app. This is a great option for our international listeners and new users will also receive a free two-week trial.